Hello there, welcome to the video on introduction to functional programming. In here we make sure that we write computer function exactly similar to mathematical functions. For example, let's look at the mathematical function fx equal to x plus 1 over here. In here, for any given value of x, the output of x plus 1 will always be constant. For example, if we pass x as 2, 2 plus 1 will always be 3. If we pass x as 5, 5 plus 1 will always be 6. So in functional programming, the programs written in programming language behave exactly similar to mathematical functions. We can write the function fx equal to x plus 1 in any programming language in a very simple way. We define the function which takes a parameter and return x plus 1. One of the very important aspect of functional programming is immutability. For example, if I create a variable called a with a value 100, it will remain 100 for the lifetime of the variable called a, which means it cannot be changed. Now you will ask a question, if I don't change the value of a, how will I modify? Well, to change the value, you need to create a new variable called b and you can do the desired operation to get a new value. But in this case also A remains unchanged. The biggest advantage of functional programming comes from the fact that these programs can easily work on multi-core and multi-threaded environment. In functional programming, functions are considered as first class citizen, which means that a function can be passed on to and returned from a function, just like variables. For example, consider this function fn. I will create another function and take this function fn as an argument just like variables. No special action needs to be done to pass a function onto a function. Similarly, we can create a function which returns a function. In this case also, we will not do any special syntax or a special arrangement to return a function from inside a function. You may be surprised to know that in functional programming there are no loops, only recursions. Because loops require mutable variables which is against the basic construct of functional programming. For example, you can see in this particular code that you cannot come out of loop unless and until you change the variable called a. And in functional programming this is not done, not acceptable. That's why you cannot have loops in functional programming. Some of the well-known functional programming languages out there are Haskell, Clojure, Scala, and oldies like Java, C++ and Python also support functional programming constructs as of today. So that's all about basics of functional programming. I hope I was able to explain functional programming in easiest possible way. Thanks a lot for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.